Hi Choreo, how are you guys doing today? Um, I hope you're doing well. Um, so today you're here in the spot that I take Choreo every week. Um, and so I felt like it was appropriate for me to teach class here because this is where I take class. Right here by my window, it's good lighting. And I don't know, it feels like it creates a positive environment for thought, which is what we're going to be doing today. So let's get started. Okay, so last week we talked about space and we talked about like organic energy. This week we're going to talk about, um, so usually you talk about things like phrase, you talk about space. Now we're going to talk about time. I feel like time is such an important part because... I don't know. I feel like timing and um, how you use it can really impact a dance. You know, think about it. If things are moving fast the whole time, where is the dynamicism? If things are moving slow the whole time, where is the dynamics? You know, you want people to watch and you want people to connect. And so I feel like using your time wisely is an effective way to improve your choreography, right? So let's talk about time a little bit, right? I'm going to be reading to you. <laughs> from my book so um time time as flow time as order it evaporates during involvement pleasure stagnates during worry waiting pain and teases in anticipation freezes in design sculptures and paintings fragments in dreams and memories Time as an ordering force provides a matrix within which things can be coordinated, measured, and calculated. When allowed to, it can dictate and control an arbitrary, predetermined, non-responsive way, right? So we talk about how um, time feels um, slower or quicker depending on um, how you're feeling, right? So, uh, cause you know, when you're sad, you feel like things last forever and time is moving so slow, but like when you're enjoying yourself, time speeds up, right? But it's really all at the same time. It's just, it feels that way because of how we're feeling, right? Um, the pulse of the people is like a barometer of their feelings. This is what I just said. The tempo of a group reflects their drive. Their rhythms often reflect their style. The choreographer has all of these as his tools. The combination of them is what distinguishes different styles of dance, right? Okay, such as flamenco, balinese, jazz, the pulse of the townspeople in Charles Weidman's Lynch Town, and of the Furies in Martha Grant's Night Journey show, how can they be put to powerful use? Yeah. So. All right, so the last two things I'm gonna talk to you about are tempo and momentum. Yeah, I have a little improv exercise to go with um, tempo, so we're gonna work on that. Um, but tempo um, is important as well. What feels appropriate for the emotion and like thing that you are trying to convey, yeah? Because obviously if I'm sad or sad, or something like that. Um, my tempo might be a little slower. Maybe. I don't know. Um, and this can also like vary because you can also like surprise the audience. But if you're trying to relay what you're trying to relay, you want to be as specific as possible, right? And you want to make sure people understand what you're talking about right or what you're dancing about or choreographing about so if i'm sad i'm not probably going to do upbeat energetic like fast choreography it's probably not gonna happen right it's probably gonna be a little bit on the slower side whereas if i'm excited i'm uplifted a bop, a bop, a bop. see i'm already talking faster right tempo changes so much about a piece and it tells me so much about a piece right so the beat goes fast the beat goes very slow the speed of the beat is the tempo and it can determine or be determined by the response and attitude of the dancer 
Her rapid tempo could cause her to rush, withdrawing in fear or conflict, or be excited in a frenzy, or dazzle with quickness in a multiple beat jump, or when spinning in full control. The slow beat could be indulged in with sensuous pleasure or gentle caring, or could underline fatigue, pain, or sorrow. So tempo is very important, as you can see. Yeah, here's uh, your little improv for today. I'm gonna read it for you. Lots of different types of fast. There are also many reasons to be fast. You are late, hysterical, afraid, or you love moving fast, <laughs> in control or maybe even out of control. Pick what you want and play with it. Take time to experiment with different kinds of fast and different motivations for fast. After you've explored and experimented in the realm of fast for a while and have a handle on it, do the thing it's slow, right? There's lots of different types of slow. There's slow. There's like slow. And then there's like slow. You know, there are lots of different types of slow. Slowness can be soothing or it can drag us down in depression, hurt, sadness. Use the images you choose and work with it. Slowly. <laughs> Try several different moods <laughs> and attitudes towards slow. All right. Last thing we're going to talk about is momentum. All right. Momentum comes to the beat. When the tempo constantly increases, accelerando, or decreases, retardando, it produces intriguing uh, phenomena which can be used effectively in choreography. Increasing speed has its uses, a chase, the building, intensity of a fight, or the simple speeding up of a movement or phrase repeated many times. It has produced many a flashy, toward force ending. Slowly winding down or dying out can also provide endings, weakenings or contrasting preludes to high points, right? How do you have fast without the slow and how do you have slow without the fast? Yeah, you have to figure out how to balance them. Momentum has an implicit affinity for energy, coupling acceleration with a raising of energy and deceleration with a lowering on it. In the following improvs, um, we're, I'm just gonna give you one of them, but this is, momentum is something to work with. Um, if you play with the momentum, you'll usually find what you're actually, like if you're looking at something, I don't know, this is how I like to use momentum. I like to play with the movement, right? And do it a few times and change the momentum because usually, the first time you do it, it's not what you really want. But if you keep on playing with the momentum, maybe oh, I want it fast. Maybe what would this look like if it were slow? And like, it really helps evolve and like help, it helps click things in place really. Playing with the momentum and the speeding and like the timing of things can really change your piece. It really can, it can take it from 2D to 3D, just like that, you know? So if you are ever like, I don't know how I feel about this, like play with the speed, yeah? I like to do that sometimes. Um, but something, your last little improv thing, um, super short to the point, it's what the exercises, um, like the category of exercises, short and to the point. Try a movement starting slow and strong. As you get faster, become weaker and more gentle. Yeah, play with that. Play with that for, I don't know, as long as you want to. Um, I hope you've enjoyed class. If you have any questions, feel free to talk to me, email me. Um, I'm always pretty much available because <laughs> of this whole COVID thing. I um, always got my computer and I'm more accessible. So um, let me know if you have any questions. I love you guys. I miss you guys. I hope you're having a wonderful day. And bye.